Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. In this episode, I'm going to go over three very easy to find and see objects in Sagittarius. M8 or Messier 8, also known as the Lagoon Nebula, M20, also known as the Triffid Nebula, and M22, a spectacular globular cluster, very close to Caos Borealis. Two of them, you might be able to see with your naked eye, definitely can see all three with binoculars, even a pair as small as 10 by 42. Small telescope, 70 or 80 millimeters, you should be able to see all three. But if you have a bigger instrument, all three of them will look much better. I'm going to look with these 10 by 42 binoculars. I'm first going to look with my naked eye. I'm pretty sure, I, I know I can see M8 and M22, but I don't think I can see M20, but I'll try. And then with the binoculars, I will be able to. And after that, I'm going to look with this 8-inch grain, and then with this 10-inch Dobsonian. But you don't need an instrument that big, but if you have one, by all means use it because they look even better with the bigger instrument. M8, the Lagoon Nebula, is magnitude 4.6, so you should be able to see it even in a Bortle 5 area. And inside of the nebula, it's an emission nebula, it has a star cluster, NGC 6530, and also a double star, Argolander 31. And it's only about five and a half degrees northwest of Caus Borealis, the top of the teapot asterism in Sagittarius. And once you get it in the field of view, the Triffid Nebula is just above it. So very easy to find. And to find M22, the globular cluster, you just go about two and a half degrees north east. And you can also maybe fit the globular cluster in the same field of view with Caus Borealis in your binoculars, which probably has about five degrees field of view. For the Triffid Nebula, it is an emission nebula, a reflection nebula, and a dark nebula. You'll be able to see the nebula, but to see the dark nebula you need to go to a dark sky site because it's kind of hard or a bigger instrument. And for M22, it is a spectacular globular cluster that <laughs> rivals, if not beats, M13. It is phenomenal. And if you can get it into a bigger telescope and magnify, it will knock your socks off. But it looks good in binoculars too. And try to see it with your naked eye. I'm in a Bortel 2 site, <laughs> allegedly. I, on a whim, got up this morning and decided to drive here to Laguna Mountain. I should have brought my little refractor, but I was in a hurry to get out of there, because if you don't get out of there in the Bay Area by 11 a.m., you get stuck in horrific traffic in the expanding suburb of San Jose, Morgan Hill, which used to be a little horse town, but now it is huge and it's light polluted and it has terrible traffic. <laughs> but I got out of there with these two telescopes and these binoculars. And that's good enough. So when it gets dark, we'll look for those three objects. I can see Caus Borealis and Sagittarius. I can clearly see the Milky Way. It's beautiful. And I can see the Lagoon Nebula with my naked eye, like a puff of steam coming out of the teapot. <laughs> and it's beautiful. <laughs> and so, of course, I can see it with binoculars. Beautiful. I can almost fit the Lagoon Nebula in the same field of view with M22, the beautiful globular cluster near Caus Borealis. Beautiful. Just beautiful. One more thing I wanted to mention about Sagittarius is that this constellation can be seen in both hemispheres. In the southern hemisphere, it's much more easily seen as it will be much higher in the sky. 
In the northern hemisphere, it'll be low on the horizon, and the farther north you are, the lower it will be on the horizon. The best month to see Sagittarius and the showcase objects is August. Here is Sagittarius, and here is the teapot asterism. There's Caus Borealis. There is the Lagoon Nebula, the Trifid Nebula, and here is M22. If you live in a light polluted area, very light polluted, and you're having trouble seeing the Emission Nebula and the Lagoon Nebula, try a UHC or even an O3 filter to bring out the nebulosity. On this 8-inch Schmidt-Cassegrain, I'm using a Mead Superplossal 32 millimeter eyepiece. And I just put a UHC filter, an astronomic, on there. And boy, did it make the nebulosity pop. Very cool. Very, very cool. Wow. So give that a try. Wow, does it look pretty. I had to come over here to the Dobsonian to get a wider field of view because the Lagoon Nebula is huge. It's 90 by 40 arc minutes. So you need a wide angle eyepiece to see all of it. But if you look at the star cluster within the Lagoon Nebula, if you look at the edge, you'll see a 9.5 magnitude star. And that star is what powers the emission nebula. It's a cloud of gas and dust, and it's lit up by that star. Those stars in that cluster are very young, and they are what light up this emission nebula. Very, very pretty. So now let's go to the Trifid Nebula. So for the Trifid Nebula, you can see it with binoculars. But if you want to see the dark lanes, Barnard 85, then you have to go to a dark sky site because dark nebulae are hard to see unless you're in a very dark sky site. And some of them, <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're in a dark sky site, they're just hard. <laughs> but this one you can see if you're in a dark enough place, um, a filter won't help. You just need to dark adapt, be in a dark sky site, and look at it and study it. But I can see the dark lanes in the Trivid Nebula. Part of this nebula is reflection nebula, and filters don't help with reflection nebulae either. Would help with the emission nebula part, but not the dark nebula or the reflection nebula. But what a pretty, pretty object. Now let's go to M22, the globular cluster. Wow. Now I'm looking at M22, globular cluster in Sagittarius. I was able to see it with my naked eye. It was hard. It's magnitude 5.1, but I could see it. It's just a tiny little thing to your naked eye. And in binoculars, it's a tight ball. But in a telescope at high magnification, you can make out so many stars. It's so beautiful. If you have a 100 millimeter or larger telescope, you should be able to make out individual stars around the perimeter. But if you have bigger telescope than that, four inches, eight inches, then you can make out stars all the way to the core. So magnify it and look at it. It's so pretty. It's beautiful. Oh my heavens. <laughs> wow. I'm looking at M22 globular cluster at 340 times magnification. Oh my heavens. Oh, it's beautiful. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, before that, I looked at the Trifid in this telescope, and I was able to see the dark lanes in the Dobsonian also. It's hard. Uh, you have to take your time, you have to dark adapt, but 
I could see them. I think you can see the dark lanes in a, maybe a 90 millimeter telescope if you're in a dark sky site. But wow, three beautiful, beautiful objects in Sagittarius that anyone can see. M8, the Lagoon Nebula, plus the star cluster NGC 6530. M20, the Trifid Nebula, and M22, the beautiful globular cluster. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever. Sula. Sun and all. <laughs>